This Final Cut Pro 10 Tour presentation is brought to you by the LumaForge Share Station, the world's best storage for Final Cut 10. For more information on how the Share Station can improve your workflow, head on over to LumaForge.com. So Van, tell us something more about yourself. Oh, well, uh, I'm a freelance editor, um, Finnish English, and um, started my career in television, um, then moved on to the commercial world, did a good 10 to 15 years in spots, uh, moved on to documentaries, and the last six years been working in film. And uh, we're right in the middle of shooting uh, uh, The Unknown Soldier, and Tony and I came back. Uh, we we had day 60 was on Friday, arrived here at IBC yesterday, and we continue on Tuesday. So we're <laughs> kind of... <laughs> and also, uh, I'd like to introduce in the audience, we have Antris, could you stand up? He's our DIT. Hello. For the un Hello. Unknown Soldier. Very important so guy. We're well represented <laughs> here. Yeah, this is from the previous uh, work that I, I did. Well, not the previous, the one before, because I, I did a documentary before The Unknown Soldier. But last year uh, in Ireland, in Dublin, uh, a show called Rebellion, uh, and I edited that on Final Cut 10. Uh, Rebellion was released just uh, recently. It's Sundance TV in America bought it, and I guess it's on Netflix at the moment. It so is. A big deal. It was a big deal for the Irish, um, marking the centenary of the, from when the Irish uh, began to rebel against English rule. It was very interesting, by the way, getting the gig, because um, I'm part British, and it was the first time ever uh, in my career my nationality was uh, raised. Um, <laughs> and uh, so it was, it was kind of interesting. Of, the director, Aqua Lohimus, is also directing um, The Unknown Soldier that I'm working on at the moment with Tony. Um, uh, wanted to bring me along for the gig. So, uh, but so for Aqua, I'm a Finnish editor, but for, to the Irish, I'm an English editor. That's <laughs> no good when we're talking about the rebellion against the English. <laughs> so, and yeah, it's a five part, five part series and into one hour slots. Um, it's television, so very fast paced as well. What were the specific challenges you met with this project? You know, n nothing specific. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, al they're always the same challenges. So you've got not enough time. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, was yeah, I, was, I was saying that because it's television, you have even less time. And Aqua is a director. He produces a lot of footage. So um, I think the budget was... <laughs> two weeks per episode right. and that's not a lot of time really and in fact they were at they were suggesting that it's like five or six days per episode to edit and I said well that's just not on because I mean you guys don't realize how much material is going to be produced and in that sense using uh, 10 which will go into the workflow that we're working on at the moment it allowed the speed of um, of ingesting and selecting the material uh, gave us the chance that while they're filming, so we 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 can always be one day behind of the film. And <coughs> this is your setup. Yeah. Um, can you tell us more, something more about well, it? Well, I don't know if you can quite make it out, but that's a standing desk. Yes. I had to do a lot of work to get that, and um, it's brilliant. I, I recommend it to anybody. Mm -hmm. It's um, now working on location. I don't have it with me. And it's really annoying sitting hunched up. <laughs> and, uh, but there's a standing, there's a station there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a, regular, it's a regular setup. And now, for the purpose of this picture, I've, you can see we've got the client monitor on, and then we've got a, a third monitor to the right. When I'm editing alone, I have all of those. I have the AV output turned off because it just it gets sticky. Mm -hmm. So, um, but this is just, uh, it looks better, <laughs> 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 to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, what are the things that you like specifically in Final Cut Pro 10 for doing such a production? Selection, the speed of selection. I think the biggest thing about 10, can I backtrack because this is, a, that's a huge question. Yes, I know. Um, 
uh, at the end of the day, um, we, the editor, really, we, we, we analyze and we synthesize, right? So we break apart and we put together. Uh, we we uh, break it, putting together m could mean um, the integration of the story, the theme, characterization, plot, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's very complicated, but to do that, to make a coherent story uh, timeline, as if you will, there's a lot of analyzing going on. Now, in concrete terms, what this could mean um, in t in relating to Final Cut 10 is the two of the, the biggest things for me are s the sim very simple tools of rejection and favoriting. I think they're brilliant because the uh, the incredible abundance of material to, to sift it down and to get to, to, to try and wrap your own mind. It's a, it's a, a game of remembering things like uh, at the moment I'm receiving five to eight hours per day of material. So I've got one day to go through that to, to try and for the first time over, of course I'll be doing that many, many times, but to be able to to remember what I've got, I need a tool or tools that will help me see the forest from the trees. Um, and, and I think that the designers of Final Cut 10 have actually, they understood that. And, and for me, so uh, we just saw a presentation on Core Melt, which is fantastic, and, and all the other apps, the e ecosystem that's come around Final Cut. Um, but for me, really, it's, it boils down to how simple it is for me to organize footage. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. And that's <laughs> the most important thing for you. Uh, for me, yeah. To be able to quickly search through your media and to find what you need. Yeah, because you know, you, you can, I mean, w uh, our material count now is 260 hours. And that's day 60 of shooting. And we've still got 20 more days to go. That's a lot to remember. Um, mm -hmm. So some kind of way you might see, you'll, it'll be in your subconscious that I know I've seen this character lift her eyebrow in a way that can be interpreted as meaning this or that. Now, where is it? Now, when you're, you're, you're editing and, and, you know, when you've got a good day and you've got a good flow going on, and by the way, the flows are very short. I've realized, I've, I've analyzed myself working that most of the time there's two I'm, I'm now I'm sidetracking, but right. there's two modes of editing, I think. There's the mechanical mode, and then there's the creative mode. The mechanical mode is all this organization, and the creative mode is, is a short spur of um, originality, that, ah, an integration, that this, that, and that, that's, that's good. It can, it'll be good if, it'll last, if it lasts for an hour or two. I know. Uh, but you can get a lot done during those spurs. And um, sorry, what was the original question? Because I sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> what are the things that you like most about Final Cut Present for your work? Why did you decide to make it? Because I know you, oh, uh, you, you work on Avid okay. annually. So I've worked, I started out on Avid. So yeah. I'm, well, I'm 42 now. I, when I, um, out of film school, I, I was the right place, the right time. It was just when NLEs and Avid were, were spreading. So, so I came directly into the digital uh, age and um, then in 2000 something 2001 2003 I started my own company went totally freelance so the first reason um, uh, that then we're talking of Final Cut 7 of course uh, was the, the pragmatic just economical it's cheap um, I, so I can do the same work with this rather than dish out thousands you know I can I could well I think in those days oh you know, yeah. Avid would it was it would cost a thousands. small, I you know, know. be <laughs> worth a car or something, yeah. a small house. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then moving, there is a slight amount of geekiness in my blood that when a new version comes out, then I do get kind of, oh, it would be nice just to see how this works. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when 10 was coming out, I was working on a, f a feature film called The Na Naked Harbor on 7. Yeah. And it was, it was clear to me by then that this is this has got to be the last film that I'm working on with seven because it's just not it's not th working fast enough um, our assembly cut at the moment is five hours long we, we're having very small issues with with ten but uh, it would have been impossible on seven okay. so some screenshots I'm not sure how well you can see them this no, is we, we rebellion well. um, 
I mean, this is another reason I, I love um, or I enjoy this tool. I, I, w I think love is, you shouldn't use that word when we're talking, <laughs> we're talking of computer applications. So, so but uh, uh, the simplicity. So this would be my regular or one style of editing. So I keep everything minimized. Um, but the idea that, that you've got so much going on under the hood anyway, we've got all, the, the, all our channels, we can access everything. Um, this is, um, again, from Rebellion, <coughs> my use of uh, seeing the forest from the trees. So we used, and also in The Unknown Soldier, we've got multicams. Mm -hmm. uh, this was shot with ba mainly with two cams. Um, but I'm editing as if it was a, uh, a one-camera production. Mm -hmm. So this would be my normal setup with the filter, so it's showing to hide the multicams. But when I approach the scene for the first time, I'll just have a look at the at both cams at the same time, just to get an idea of what's going on. Uh, and, um, but then when I'm actually editing, I'll hide the multicams. I don't edit with the multicams on the timeline for the simple reason that you cannot decompose the multicams afterwards, which is a, a bit of a hassle. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just avoid using them on the time. Because obviously in, in long form, we do have a, a fairly cumbersome post-production. It's not like a, a, an, an advert or a... Sure. A music video where you can just yeah, that's right. it. You know, it's ready <laughs> <laughs> when it's ready when it's cut. Um, what else? So, how, how do you organize all all these clips? I see you have a strict organization. Well, and then we come that's to Tony because um, <laughs> just briefly on Rebellion was the the last time. I, well, yeah, I did in the documentary. I used keywords mm -hmm. in places of bins. Uh, Tony came up with the idea. He said for the unknown soldier. He says, well, why don't we use smart collections? Instead, and I said, well, I'm not sure about that because the keyword collection seemed to be working okay. So why would why would we go into smart collections? <laughs> and um, <laughs> let's not break it since it's it's working. I'll pull up some um, some of those, and I think Tony can now you can talk about the, the smart collections. Uh, shall shall we first because we're, we're going over to the to the feature film now? Oh right. Shall yeah. we first talk about it in general? What, what what is it about, and how did you get commissioned to do this? Well, I, now, the un now this was big for the Irish, and the unknown soldier that we're working on at the moment is a big deal for the Finnish. Um, it's, uh, it marks also next year, uh, 2017, be a centenary um, f uh, since the uh, Finnish independence. Now, but the unknown soldier is, by the way, a story of um, a, a rifle company during the Second World War. Uh, it's a classic uh, Finnish story. It'll be, it'll be under a lot of scrutiny. Uh, next, in about one year's time when it's released, in Finland at least. So it's a war film, so there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of extras, there's a lot going on. We've got three cams. Uh, Aries? Uh, Aries, yeah. I think they're Amiri. Uh, Amira? Amira? I'm gonna. Two Amiras and one Mini. Two Amiras and one Mini. And how large is the, is, you know, the group of people working on, on the shoot? Well, on any given day, there's about 100 extras. Mm -hmm. Kaiser, do you remember the size of our crew? 120, 120. crew members. Yeah. yeah. It's, so it's a big, and for Finland, which is a very tiny country, <laughs> it's a big deal. Uh, I think even for Europe, it's a big deal. Let's go to the organization, and that's Tony who's going to explain something about it. Yeah, I, I really hate talking, but um, what's great about TEN is uh, it's all about searching and filtering. Mm -hmm. So we just make um, smart collections that search for all the clips that have the this C number in the scene data. Right. Or the slug line or the slug from the script. Yeah, also that. But men does the keywords afterwards. Yeah. Because we, we use notes and uh, the data fields yeah. for searching the whole clip. It, it, you, you, you're much better in English than I am. Well, the, <laughs> <laughs> the thing with, yeah, the, so I think what you're trying to say is yeah. that, <laughs> that, <laughs> that um, so Tony's idea was a smart collection is per clip. Mm -hmm. So it, it and our clips are you know they're fairly long. They're anything from two minutes to six to eight minute takes. They're very long clips, and they include a, a there's a lot going on. Um, whereas a keyword, sure, you could also give a keyword and tell it to, for the whole clip information like scene number and sure. so so forth. But rather than use in organisation, you want to save that tool for specifics. 
So we can give the, the key, use the keyword to give us specific moments, not overall clip information. Now this took a long time for me to figure out um, it, I mean, it and I've been watching all these kind of similar things, and very few people uh, talk about this, or I couldn't find anything on, on the internet um, about the philosophy behind keywords versus smart collections. And I think Tony has cracked it uh, on this production now that we can now properly use on, on in, in long form uh, a keyword. So you know, the keyword it, you get the blue bar. So if you make a you turn a keyword into a bin, you've got a blue bar across everything. Now, all of a sudden, it's useless. So make the smart collection the bin, and then you can use the keywords for specific things. So then you can see. So you've got the f you've got the green favorites, you've got the red rejects, and now you've got the blue keywords that can also mean anything that you want them to. Mm -hmm. Another problem, very briefly, with keywords. It took me a long time to figure this one out. Sounds very simple, but it wasn't for me at least. Uh, if you've got too many keywords, they're useless. Mm -hmm. If you've got too few key keywords, they're useless. So what's the right balance? And for this, we first approached, uh, so, well, I'll come up with the keywords given to the, the um, uh, continuity girl. So when she's doing in shot notes on set, she will use those. But we soon, just after a week of shooting, we realized that it's just, it's really hard for her to create keywords. She was also creating her own keywords that I, so immediately, uh, I'll never need to know that information. Um, so that's why in this production, I will personally, as editor, just do the keywords from what I need. And um, but then all the um, the the data that's available that will be taken care of. Uh, uh, well, Tony mm -hmm. and um, and Mayu on set. Yeah, very interesting to know. So um, actually, do you bring some things we can? Yeah, so this is just an image uh, on set. We're shooting. We've been shooting at a military base. This is what my office has looked like for the last <laughs> couple of months. And uh, also, so this is near location, not on location. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we change locators to be in an edit suite. Um, the monitor, by the way, up here is just the hotel room uh, <laughs> monitor that Television. I to hook up <laughs> to the what's it called? The Black Magic, the little box. That, that spits yeah. out the AV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, you know, uh, again, only for image purposes because it just, it's too slow, you know. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Um, talking of analyzing, okay, this would be, this is like a, a regular, this is what uh, it, my bin would look like at the moment. This is just for one scene. Uh, it's a very complicated scene, and this is with all clips showing. And uh, you can't see it, but it's in 30 seconds. So w each block is 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So they're fairly long. Uh, you can see my the greens. This is part of the workflow during the shoot. So during the shoot, just to make sure, just to be clear, I'm not doing creative editing. This is all mechanical, and I'm feeding my subconscious with what we've got. So when the shoot is over and the dust has, has settled, um, then the creative process will begin, by which time I've already screened all the footage, I've made selections, I've formed some kind of, a, a, of an opinion to what we have. You know, in the olden days, they would actually screen the material with the director in, in a cinema. And f I mean, th th those days are just gone, unfortunately, because wouldn't it be great if we had the time to actually sit down, settle down, and have a look, and you can just talk over while the it's going. So you could hear the director say, well, I like that, but I, didn't l I wasn't really happy with this, just so you know. Um, so part of the workflow is me mechanically going through, um, making selections, oh, I like this, don't like that, reject that, that's totally useless. So my, f to, for me to reject something has to be absolutely, totally, like he's shooting, is the camera m person shooting their feet or something. Just, um, if it's a favorite, it means it, it's particularly <laughs> good. Um, if there, you can see there's some blue markers Mm -hmm. So during the take, we, there might be a retake, or uh, um, so you s the actors begin from the beginning. So I'll just leave a marker just for myself to know that oh, they, there was a stutter and a problem there. So the director asked them to start from the beginning. Um, you, you do this on, on set or at near location? Near location. Um, so and part of the workflow is so the director. I mean, they start shooting really early. They'll he'll end they'll end the shoot between nine eleven o'clock. 
at night. Uh, then they have all, all the head of department meetings for the next day. And after all that, you know, past midnight, uh, Aka will then come into the edit and, uh, and, he, and I will show him a, uh, an assembly edit of the previous day, which Tony has done. And also, I can discuss, I c I, I, many of the times I see that assembly at the same time, or just, just prior to Uncle walking in. Um, and I would have formed an opinion, because all that day, I've been actually screening the, the material um, in detail, making selections, and I can see what Tony's missed out, because Tony's under a time limit. You know, he's just yeah. assembly, it's just like A, B, C. Mm -hmm. First he walks up there, then they fire that, and then they run away. Um, so that would be, it's in replacement of using dailies, we have a simple assembly. Uh, and then Akul can make a, f a formed opinion, especially if he's shooting a sequence that will continue the, the following day. Right. He can make a formed opinion that, okay, we've got that covered well, we don't need to go back, that, that or we can release this actor. Um, but most of the times it's, it's, it's more in that, oh, I guess it would be good if we did have this and that shot. And I can say, yeah, it's true, we actually don't have that shot in, in any way, in any place. This is the actual project um, that, that uh, this is the assembly that was uh, on Friday, so this is straight out of the oven. Tony consolidated just the, the assembly sequence, which is now five hours long. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, the, the actual length of the film will be just over two hours yes. and at the same time we're doing a four-part series so you can see um, the way so we've got uh, they're in events so we've got uh, everything by the way is one in one library for what I call a TS which is uh, the Finnish for unknown soldier uh, abbreviated I have a, a second library called overflow which I developed on rebellion realizing that after so many you get so many sequences and duplicates so I've realized that after a while you, you make duplicates of the projects, you want to get rid of them, but you don't want to delete them. Mm -hmm. So I just create a new library and I just call that Overflow. All right. um, so for instance, here in my sequence um, event, I've got the assembly, which there should only be just one single, there's just one single um, timeline for that. And of course I do backups, but they're elsewhere, but I try to keep things nice and clean. Um, here we've got days, so you can see here, for instance, TS Day 55. Um, so this would be an assembly that Tony has made, it would look like that. Then I, I'll see from Tony, I'll receive an XML for, for Day 54, or maybe I should open, well, let's just, so I'll have the, the uh, assembly cut, plus then an event with each scene. So Day 54, they've been oh, massive, very, simple. So here I can say that on day 54 they shot scene 44, 47, 48, 50, uh, to 76. These are very short, small scenes. And then I can have a look and see what, in fact, oh, this is scene 79A, this is Tony's assembly of it. This is actual footage from This is actual, yeah, this is our proxy footage that uh, I've been given permission to skim it through, <laughs> right. but I can't I understand. stay on it. No, no, I understand. No problem. No. We're already happy that we can see something. <laughs> but you can see it, it's a war film. And, um, <laughs> and a yeah, we have a question. On the smart collection, so as to see the field. Yes. Because it's really brilliant. <laughs> I really use them, but I sometimes I don't know which filter is the, the very best, so as to have the smart collection. Mm -hmm. So let me find a. So this is at its simplest the filter for a smart collection, basically just denoting the scene oh. name, 276. <laughs> but um, let's have a look at. So here in notes, we've got X, SWA, day, night. So that's just the slug, slug line from uh, the, the script. That's a very simple one, but then there may be, if I can find one that has more information. <laughs> <laughs> so I might, uh, for instance, in the slug line, it might say a, a, spe a specific, uh, um, something meaningful to the story. Right. Um, so then instead of searching with keynotes, uh, keywords, I'll just um, type in, oh, now I need uh, so-and-so's uh, you know, general view of this, you know, GV that and pfft, there it is. Absolutely. And um, and also avoiding uh, so as not to make too many keywords. So you also break it down in script lines? Or? No, no. It's just and and um, 
Aku as a director used a lot of uh, uh, improvisation methods, mm -hmm. so uh, it, it just it would be it's just not worth it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and let's see. Do I name my favourites? Yeah. I don't on fiction, but I do in documentary work. So um, uh, on especially in, in documentary, I've used the favourites. I name them for in, in interviews. So what? the subject that they're talking about at this moment especially the, the previous I was working in Austria so I, and um, it was in Spanish and, and, uh, and German and Finnish and English now I don't my German and Spanish is not that good so um, so then it would be translated translated for me and then I would also just type them up in favorites okay this is that part about yeah. this and that right. yeah but when you for hot when you're working on something for six months you actually it's it's amazing how quickly the human brain can adapt to the language they don't really speak to. You actually do begin to hear hear the words, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and you work on it long enough. Right. Uh, going back to or organization. Oh, this is the first time I'm using these these color things. Yes, I was maybe. going to ask you about. Yeah, it. a Finnish editor started using. What was it? It's Control Command Shift, Shift. and then you get all the emojis. Yeah. So they're in fact very good if you look at the days. So these each day has a, a green tick mark, uh, which is brilliant because after a while you can get so confused. The tick mark for me is just me saying that I've added this to the main, to the master assembly. I've gone through it, it's gone through, so now I can move these to the overflow because mm -hmm. I, I, I really don't need to go back to, the, to these assemblies because they're already on the master assembly line. And they're, they're going to change when I actually begin the creative editing. They'll be old and inferior by that time anyway. So, um, and I'm also using so the, the white blocks here. These are basically for the for the f uh, the t when the TV version will be in four parts, but the film is in four acts. So to keep this in some so you know when you match frame, and it match frames to the whole library, which is a pain in the backside. So at least this eliminates it and makes it a bit so it only match match frames back to an act rather than the whole library mm -hmm. for me organization is really key it's mm -hmm. key to actually if if you don't know what you've got how will you know how to edit because editing is hard enough as it is so um to to keep track of everything and and yeah. when i s lecture to students um, I know it's about the, the most unsexy thing you can talk about, <laughs> <laughs> organization, but I truly believe it's the most important thing uh, within the workflow. Okay. Is there anything else you want to show us before we get some questions? Well, yeah, <coughs> you're free to, to... Oh, using roles, I don't know, I've got composer. Um, obviously the composer's done some, some quick something for us. Um, which, by the way, uh, you know, the composer, Thomas Newman, yep. uh, a guy that he uses is working on this film as well. So that, that's pretty, our composer is right. finished and he's working in LA and he managed to get this musician that does this, these weird wacky sounds for Thomas Newman. And uh, so I was really like, this is oh, yeah. amazing, this, oh, is yeah. this guy. Is. <laughs> and, Absolutely. Uh, and some really, uh, I don't know if these are, uh, are these them. Um, I have no idea. Oh, yeah, that's right, because I said we don't need sound, but yeah. Mm. Then okay. we can have sound. Then we've got um, library music, and so this is music that we, if we needed to, you know, mm. before editing, I'll, I would already, I'll do a lot of music research. I use music during editing j just for um, shits and giggles, basically, to, get to motivate myself also and to help out some of the scenes, but eventually the composer will then start right. giving in stuff. And then just temp stuff so these attempts and i'll roll these so if i've got them in the timeline so they certainly don't get confused that look yeah this sounds great but we really we can't use um right. something from the revenant but at the moment while i'm i'm working with fight we're feeling it gives you our feeling. way yeah yeah sound Perfect. effects of course we need atmosphere and and a lot of gunfire <laughs> and uh, and then, the th then we have an x event um and the x is in this particular film, mm -hmm. we are not using a clapperboard. Right. Um, so, which, you know, even I was against that. You know, can't we just use it? Because it's just, just the backup of everything. Even yes. though we've automated Absolutely. 
and there's the one day and there's the lunch break and then the camera operators don't reset the the sync box, the jam box, whatever, then you just a couple of frames off, then it goes into manual resyncing, then all of a sudden out your Tony's workflow gets chugged up. Um, so, but Arkell's reasoning was that he, he really doesn't want to use a clapper because we've got three cameras, some of them are really wide, it's just a pain, it's just it takes a long time for the clapper person to run up somewhere to get it all to three cameras, right. takes time, plus it turns it into a more, it makes it more formal. So if you don't have a clapper, it's kind of like you can turn on the cameras bef and, and the actors and then, you, you know, an uncle's way of, right. you know, okay, let's, let's just go, let's, you know. So there's no kind of, especially with if you, if you have children or animals, then, you know, if you're working with animals, you don't want to <laughs> clap, you know, <laughs> you've lost the moment. And, and, and some actors, even experienced ones, can freeze up when they realize, okay, now I'm oh on, no. but you keep them yeah. as natural and calm as possible. So we've got no, no clappers, and that's, and s uh, sorry, uh, in one second, uh, that's why we have the X event, mm -hmm. um, meaning, okay, we have no idea where these are going. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so but, but as we go along, you know, there's not too much so far, but even now I can see some of these and, I, I, and oh yeah, I know where this is supposed to go. But at the time of sh shooting the continuity girl, didn't know quite uh, or didn't have the chance to clarify it and um, but then each night when I meet up with Arco I can also say oh you did this why you do that oh I just did this for a trailer purpose or mm. or, mm. or in one you know oh, I had the drone people uh, the because we've got some drone shots and we we got all we needed within half a day but I'd paid for the whole day so, so we just sent them off to the <laughs> so, so, so maybe maybe that might be you know right that's um, great so yeah so you okay. had a question. If you don't use a slate at the head of the take, you could do uh, still a tail slate. Yes. And it will be after the action. Yeah. You don't lose that moment. Yes, and Uncle did. this was his method prior to, to going no slate at all. Okay. But um, I even if you have the, the slate at the end, it's still the camera's rolling. And when you're shooting so much material, every single second costs money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And... I mean, truth be told, we don't need the slates. No. I mean, actually, we don't need them. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got the sound department. We, we're using metadata from the sound because the sound recorders, they've got time to say, oh, this is that and that. So we're taking uh, metadata from them and uh, uh, joining that with the shot notes metadata. And, um, and I, it, it, because it's fiction, you know, I, I have some idea uh, that seeing the image that, oh, this is that part, you know. No. So how about about the movie now you have 20 shooting days left yes. now yeah and the w so principal photography was summer shoot right and now we're going to autumn winter and spring perfect so and when are you going to actually start editing the creative editing well uh, they the principal photography uh, ended uh, on fr friday mm -hmm. so um, on tuesday this right. so i, I so I, i'm just going to go and start editing right uh, so my first I actually spoke with the director this morning and he was like, oh, you know, for the VFX guys, you know, they're going to need this and that. And I said, oh, I right. thought I would just start from where I felt like starting from. <laughs> you know, it's huge, like, where do I start? You know, the, the yeah. So I, I usually start from whatever interests me the most. Right. Because you can't start from the beginning. I mean, it's just too hot. So <laughs> just start, oh, I like this scene. I, I've got motivation for this scene. I've got an idea for this uh, scene. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, on Tuesday I'm just gonna I'm gonna set up my edit suite back yes. uh, in my hometown yes. and uh, take the five-hour sequence that I have here and um, and start going through it and and say okay yeah I know I can tidy this up immediately or mm -hmm. yeah this is really. Um, this is really just a montage and now it's mm. like 10 minutes long i'm just going to take that shot and that shot so right it's, so i can get rid of the five hours and get it down to four hours something um mm -hmm. something more reasonable i have a question about uh organization and also transferring you said you were bringing everything back to your hometown yes and then how if you're working with somebody else in another country not another geographical location how would you deal with that situation or will you or well, you know, I've never really collaborated, so I, I don't know. And our system for this movie, um, you know, even though it's a big movie f by Finnish standards, 
I mean, there's still, it's always the case of there's no money. So we have uh, what's <coughs> called a, a poor man's solution. So I mean, we didn't have the tens of thousands of euros that you need for a, a big server setup thing. So we just have three eight terabyte laces mm -hmm. and, uh, and then make sure that they're already, I mean, Tony's job is to make sure that they're always in sync. So we'll give you a jellyfish. <laughs> Thank you very much. But the, yeah. the jellyfish was the, so the smaller one. Yeah, yeah. You want a big one? We might need. A <laughs> 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 we give you a big one. Very grateful. <laughs> uh, Antris uh, D D I T says that we're now our original, ca uh, ca origi native material count oh, yes. is at what? How many terabytes? Oh, Eighty terabytes. Eighty terabytes. Now, yeah, after sixty days. We'll so. give you an indie. <laughs> That's very, very kind of you. So, so, so this is now like official because you've said it out loud. So. <laughs> Can't go back now. But, um, so, there any uh, other questions? Any other questions? Well, you mentioned VFX. Mm. Yes, VFX. How does that fit into your process? Are, are you working with them during the shoot or for the day after, so that they know where some of the VFX shots? Well, in pre-production, of, of course, there's been all these sittings with uh, and palavers that this is where it's gonna, this is going to be a heavy vfx shot mm -hmm. and it's a war film there will be a lot of vfx obviously and there's you know there's the vfx firm and then there's the post firm in general that will be doing everything else so there is the normal am amount of hustle and bustle of organizing that but as far as preparation you know it's we're all by the seat of our pants it's kind of like oh okay you you guys want this image now well i guess i'm gonna have to go through that scene and give me a couple of days so i can give you uh, at least an intelligent observation that i guess i guess if we use uh, the image that you're looking for it'll probably be this take mm -hmm. uh, it will probably be about this long but i there's no way that i could finalize or lock it at mm -hmm. this stage Mm -hmm. you know, um, but if if I can at least give them the right take, so that they can start start their work, right. which will take months. Will there be many VFX work on this one? Yes, yes. There's, there's a lot. There's a, okay. There's a lot. I mean, we have uh, sequences that you, we're going to have to multiply tanks and right. boats, and you know the, the regular culprits. Okay, great. Will they benefit from you using Final Cut Ten and this system? Well, they would benefit greatly if we had. Uh, um, the indie, yeah, and we were working on the the native uh, camera footage. Yes, that would absolutely. be a huge deal. Yeah, because then you know deliverables would be just oh here it is, you know, and they could also be uh, we could also just connect up. So so okay. that that would be that would be a big thing, and I would love that to happen because mm -hmm. uh, the technology's there. The biggest issues I was talking with Sam yesterday. I think I don't know if Sam's here right now. No, he's the biggest is issues is really the mentality of uh, the, the film industry that you change people you know one at a time that like even just to get a, con a script uh, continuity girl to use an ipad instead of using this system you know, sometimes it's very difficult because they say well i can't go with an ipad we'll be in the forest we'll be in really difficult locations it's going to be rain it's going to be cold there's going to be battery issues of course um, but there's also the mentality that you're, you're sure. slowly gnawing way out that you know, we could do this we c we could do this and save money on that and put it onto the screen uh, rather than have it wasted. It's a process yeah. that we have to go through, and it will it will come. Um, so, uh, any more questions? Because we have to wrap up after that one. For for syncing, did you use sync and link? Yes, sync and link. Uh, the guys are here, Philip and Greg. Fantastic. I've been using sync and link for a long time, and sync and link gives us the the multicams, by the way, just as a side product. So again, I can just have a look at, just with one glance, just see, okay, this is what's going on. It's just a, a fant phenomenal prod product. Yes. And there's something about metadata that Maybe Sync audio and Link, information. audio information, information yeah. Sync and Link, the only one out there that will give us all the channels, that na the names and channel naming, is that yeah. right? Yeah, and that's also uh, very useful when we give the AAF to the uh, yeah. sound designer. And a shout out to Sync and Link and Greg in particular, that there's any time we've had a problem, within 24 hours, he will reply it. Every time. And I've been using Zinglink for a long time. And they're all, well, he solves them immediately. Yeah. So yeah. nothing but good words for that company. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.